Good evening. Welcome to the City Council meeting of April 6, 2016. Can I have the roll call, please? Dan Carey. Present. Peg Conniff. Here. Salem Derby. Present. Jennifer Hayes. Here. J.P. Kuzinski. Here. Joe McCoy. Here. Dan Rist. Here. Tamara Smith. Here. Joy Winnie. Here. Okay, well, please, all, please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I have a motion for the approval of the minutes of March 16th, 2016. So moved. Second. Okay, a motion a second for approval of the minutes. Same discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Motion. One abstention. Motion passes. Public speak time. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to address the council? I don't see anyone. Okay. Uh, communications from elected officials, boards, and committees. Councilor uh, Jervis. Uh, we have a couple of announcements tonight. The first one uh, I wanted to announce is there is a rabies clinic, which is going to be Saturday, April 23rd, here at the Public Safety Complex, which is sponsored by Dr. James Hayden and the East Hampton City Clerk's Office. Uh, the fee is $19. It's from 1 to 2 p.m. All dogs must be on a leash, all cats must be in a cat carrier or other enclosure. Please bring proof of prior rabies vaccinations with you to the clinic. And East Hampton dog licenses will also be available. And it's uh, open to residents of all communities. Uh, I do have uh, two other um, announcements from East Hampton Parks and Rec. Uh, we, the East Hampton Parks and Rec has come out with their 2016 um, events and activities program and I believe they are available at the city clerk's office and at the rec department on uh, it has all of the important dates has a map of Nonotuck Park um, and some of the activities that happen throughout the, the summer and the spring um, so this is something that's good to have if you're interested in taking advantage of East Hampton Parks uh, and the other thing from Parks and Rec is we received a request from um, the director of Parks and Recreation John Mason uh, to create an ad hoc committee to name um, a ball field in section number three of Nonotuck Park. Um, he would like us to create an ad hoc committee. So I would, in the form of a motion, uh, like to propose that we create an ad hoc committee to name the number three, section number three ball field at Nonotuck Park. Second. Do you have a motion a second to create an ad hoc name committee for the softball park, the baseball park. Any additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passed. And one final thing uh, in relation to this, uh, the president of the city council has some nominations uh, <coughs> to the ad hoc committee as well as the mayor. So if you're interested, you can contact either the mayor or Joe McCoy. Great. Thank you. Um, we have no correspondence no. addressed to the no. Is there, is May I mention one other thing? Yeah, sure. I'll, East Hampton has a downtown cleanup day every year, which is usually well attended. I understand that it'll be Saturday, May 7th. Uh, rain or shine at 8 a.m. And the message is to meet it in front of 33 Union Street, the Greater East Hampton Chamber of Commerce. Bring your rakes. You're encouraged to bring rakes, shovels, brush cutters, and gloves. May 7th, Saturday. Thank you. And also, yes, so uh, Councillor Smith. Yes. There's also the East Hampton Book Fest going on this weekend. So it's, it's uh, publicized with the ECA Plus website. It's part of the inclusion of literary arts as our definition of arts within the city. So it's a full day of events. And also, could you give us, because I know you're involved, can you give us a little information on the um, our public schools forum as well? Mm -hmm. We're going, the East Hampton Democrats is holding uh, an educational forum for our public schools. It's going to be from 6.30 to 8.30 next Wednesday at the Eastworks Common Room. And starting at 6.15, there's going to be music playing from the high school Bowtie Group, um, which is a section of the jazz band. Great. So Thank that you. will be next week, the 13th, from 6.30 to 8.30 in the Eastworks Common Room on the first floor. Thanks for the information. Any other communications or comments from <coughs> districts or anything? Okay, moving on. Mayor Communications, Mayor. Um, just briefly, I thought the counselors would be interested that we did receive uh, uh, from uh, MassDOT our uh, Chapter 90 amount uh, is $480,005. 
And uh, so the governor is holding to his word by, you know, releasing these. The, the goal was April 1st, so he's holding to his word on that, getting, you know, getting those amounts to us early, you know, earlier in the year so that we can start uh, planning on that. And um, one other thing, I, I know some of the counselors were copied in. There was uh, a request uh, about a, uh, a traffic light at, um, on Route 10, uh, College Highway, South Street intersection. And um, uh, just a little information, uh, and I did email, um, you know, email my response to the resident, but that was a request many, many years ago to have a stoplight there. It was, you know, denied to by, you know, by, um, at that time it was Mass Highway. But uh, what we did is we actually called uh, the office today. Uh, didn't, we actually didn't even get anybody, but we'll contact them again tomorrow. And uh, to see if, you know, how, and if we could reopen our initial request for that. So a little bit came up, you know, regarding an article, and uh, so I just, you know, just update you on that. And that's a we'll updated. I think that's what stimulated because an, an, another community had made a proposal, a nearby community. Yes, exactly. Made a proposal about their intersection. Right. And, and I, I must say, when I read the article in the Gazette yesterday, the intersection at South Street and Route 10, Main Street, Main Street, were College Highway variety, that whole section. I travel it quite often. Right. I, most of us do. It's a little scary as you approach that intersection with the number of cars coming from left and right mm -hmm. and across the street and out of the parking lots yep. that are mm -hmm. the business parking lots. We really need to try to work to do something there. And I'm Agreed. glad you're going to push that with the uh, highway department. And, and, and I, exactly what JP is talking about, the intersection that was um, kind of advertised. And it, it does not mean that they are approved for their light, but the request is for uh, Pomeroy Meadow Road in Route 10. So from our point of view in East Hampton, you know, looking at, even if you're just on South Street, trying to go from one side of South over Route 10 is extremely difficult. And um, so we're thinking we have much more of a, of, of a, of a need. So, so, you know, we'll, we'll start things going and see where we go from there. Um, and, uh, it, but, you know, and I'll, I'll keep you apprised on that. But uh, just because they have requested does not mean that they have been approved, does not mean that that'll happen. But again, nothing happens if you don't request. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Councilor Derby. I, I think you know, this one is important for me as it is in my precinct and my neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> I per personally witnessed accidents there. Uh, and, you know, and I know that it's complicated. So um, since that's pretty much where the state highway starts, and that complicates everything, which is why, you know, when I first became a counselor 10 years ago, that was one of my main things, mm -hmm. and nothing has happened yet um, because it is so complicated working with the state to try to figure out how to negotiate the fact that the state highway starts at that intersection. That's exactly right. So and I just wanted to put that out there. So it's not like we've been not trying or negligent. Mm -hmm. It's just a difficult thing to try to navigate. And, and that's exactly right because it's a state highway. Right. And um, I'm sure you all remember how many years we waited and had requested. Now, normally it would take five years to just get on the tips, you know, uh, program. And remember West Street, mm -hmm. West and Route 10, yeah. um, and that took many, many years. So <laughs> they approve it, they disapprove it, they put it on, they d you know, do it when they want, but again, it's a state highway, so that is something really good to bring up. So any information I get on that, I'll make sure I pass along to all of you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Additional questions? No? Okay. Moving on to um, Standing Committee's Finance Council Wrist. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a few things this evening. I need some help. When we originally got the Hayden Animal Trust Fund, we were requested to place, what was it, the donation account that was uh, <coughs> formerly with the dog uh, shelter? I'm trying to remember the name of that. We already established a donation account for that because the group that wanted, that had donated that those funds wanted only for dogs, not for any animal. At the same time, we discovered that the Hayden Animal Trust Fund language needed to be updated. And uh, after going through the city attorney, we have now in front of you new language for the trust fund, which basically changes 
uh, the word town to city and I think the $100 is new uh, that limit there under item 6 so this language is merely updated and concludes that work we originally put the uh, shelter money in its own donation account so this simply updates the language um, and this was approved uh, by the mayor therefore if there's no questions I'd like to move that we accept this new language then I'll make a motion that the newly amended Hayden Animal Trust Fund language as proposed this evening be accepted by the City Council. Second. Okay, a motion a second to approve the newly the new wording for the Hayden Animal Trust Fund. Additional questions or comments on that? Okay, that, that um, you know, at, when we dug into this part of this was that it being a trust, there's a difference between um, just being something on the, uh, taken out of it, just a principal, or just the interest or the principal and the money we had from the shelter wanted to be you know, the, if the whole amount of money just not principal so we decided that we had to split these two but money will be available for dogs from the fund that was requested for dogs only but the Hayden Animal Trust Fund will still be available for people with dogs and cats and we again we erased any the amount, animal any, or any animal <laughs> um, so so there's a motion to second on that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Thank you. We're still working on the review of stipends. Um, one of the issues on that is going to be the council salary. We may get into that next meeting, but I urge councilors to attend. Um, although we suddenly have a large amount of issues in front of us, we may not get to it the next meeting. I'd like to set a public hearing at our next meeting for the $180,000 supplemental appropriation for the fire department overtime which was approved by the Finance Committee 3 to 0, so that's a form of a motion. Second. second. Okay, a motion and a second to set a public hearing at the next meeting for the 183,000 um, supplemental appropriation. Any additional questions or comments? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, motion passes. May I do new business, Mr. President? Sure. Okay, we have a few uh, new business items. The first is an interdepartmental transfer. <coughs> this will be a first reading. The amount requested is $5,510. It is to be transferred from the reserve fund, $5,510, to the city auditor assistant salary, $5,510. The following purpose, to provide funds for a retirement payout. I move that this be sent to finance committee. Second. Motion a second to send a finance department transfer of $5,510 to finance. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, motion passes. Um, I'm going to read all the rest of them and then move them all to finance rather than do them individually. Um, next interdepartment transfer is uh, received on March 31st. The amount requested is $9,500 to be transferred from the reserve fund, $9,500 to be transferred to the fire department vehicle equipment repair, $4,000, ambulance fund ve vehicle equipment repair, $2,500 and the ambulance miscellaneous professional services 3000 for the total of 9500 the amount requested for the following purpose to provide funds for the vehicle equipment repairs in the fire and ambulance departments and a shortage in ambulance billing costs second no i didn't no, make sorry it. i'm going to continue no. reading okay. the next interdepartment transfer is a request made on march 31st for $32,000 to be transferred from the reserve fund to be transferred to street lights Energy for Light and Heat and Street Lights Professional and Technical Services, 12,000. The first, of course, was 20,000 for a total of 32,000. For the following purpose, to provide funds for increased cost of electricity and repair to street lights. We also have supplemental appropriation request. Uh, the, here, the first one is the amount requested is 3,300 um, to be appropriated from free cash. 3,300 to be appropriated to fire department capital fire ground rehabilitation trailer, $3,300. Finally, before I read this, I wanted to update you on the CPA. This is a CPA request. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I, by default, was named the chair of the CPA. I believe Dan Hagen was the chair as well prior to my arrival. What you'll find before you is something new, I believe called the project funding worksheet which is attached to this, uh, this supplemental appropriation request. They have been working on this and what they have been trying to do which I totally concur with is to try and keep the committee under informed about the progress of any project 
um, also to make sure that all of the items that they may have talked about in committee were put into what is basically a contract so all of these items one through eight are there also that um, payments be properly uh, distributed and that any funds left over would be returned to the committee if they weren't used this was important to them and I believe it is an excellent way to approach it they also want to make sure that signs are put up that this project is funded by the Community Preservation Act we haven't been doing enough of that okay. you'll see attached to the document a budget which was worked out this took a while to develop but I want to take uh, one big thank you to Jamie Webb who is the uh, assistant planner in charge of the CPA and without her help um, I certainly couldn't get along in this committee and she keeps a very good committee well informed and I want to thank her very much so this will be a supplemental appropriation request and this will be a first reading the amount requested is one hundred eighty five thousand um, dollars it is to be appropriated from CPA reserve for open space sixty thousand the CPA budgeted reserve one hundred and twenty five thousand for a total of one hundred eighty five thousand dollars to be appropriated to the Whitebrook Middle School athletic field lights one hundred eighty five thousand dollars for the following purpose to fund the purchase and installation of athletic field lighting at Whitebrook Middle School I'm going to move that this and all the aforementioned items be moved to finance for review. Second. Okay, so the motion is second to move to move the previously read interdepartmental and supplemental appropriations to finance. Any additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. And in, in, in order to, we will take up the 185,000 for the athletic field lighting at our next finance meeting and I would like to move that a public hearing be set for the 20th uh, our next council meeting for that particular purpose I believe we will be able to take care of that and because of the timing of how this is going to take and they want to get the lights done by the fall I'd like to move it so I make a motion that we set a public hearing on the 20th okay, okay the motion a second to set a public hearing on the 20th for the uh, request for the purchase and installation of athletic field lights at Whitebrook Middle School. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Our next meeting will be next week, the 13th at 5 o'clock. Uh, and that concludes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Public safety, Councilor Hayes. Thank you, Mr. President. We're continuing our review of the street acceptance protocol. Everybody has a copy right now, and we're hopeful that we'll be able to get that in front of the planning board within the next three to four weeks. Um, we have a request to accept Fox Run as a public way. We had information from the Department of Public Works after our meeting, and it looks like there was quite a to-do list that they were requesting. So I have made an ask of the attorney to see whether or not she wants us to keep this on our agenda, because I think it's going to take them a little while to complete the list of to-dos. So as of right now, it is still on our agenda, but I am guessing that it's probably going to get removed. Um, regarding the request to allow on-street parking on a section of Pleasant Street, we have decided to put together a site visit, and that date is to be determined because we want to make sure we understand what the existing conditions are now so that we can figure out what's the best way to help that new neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And thus concludes. Okay, do you want to um, ask for an extension on that? Yeah, we could do that now. I was just going to do it next time. So, yeah, we'll do another 90-day extension for that. I don't think we'll need all that, but I'd like to make a motion for a 90-day extension for the request to allow on-street parking on a section of Pleasant Street. Second. And a motion and a second for 90-day extension for the parking on Pleasant Street. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Thank you. Concludes uh, appointments. Councilor Smith. No report tonight. Thank okay. you. Ordinance, Councilor Derby. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> uh, we, uh, some of some of the ordinance subcommittee members were able to attend the planning board meeting, which was Tuesday, where they started deliberation on um, the sign ordinance. So I just wanted to give a quick update on that. Uh, they are going to, because of the Supreme Court decision uh, that basically made all content-based sign restrictions null and void um they're looking at taking pretty much most of the sign ordinance that we have now and recreating it um and so we are going to be involved in that process with them uh <clears throat> they are looking at some ordinances we have sent them the model ordinance that we have been reviewing uh so we are going to continue to work with the planning board to try to create this uh new sign ordinance 
Um, so I wanted to let people know that. So when we do have a meeting, if they, uh, if anybody is interested in the sign ordinance, mm -hmm. to come out and uh, attend those meetings, both the um, plan board and the ordinance subcommittee, as we both will be reviewing different sign ordinances. And the first time around, it was quite a well attended uh, group of meetings um, that were actively participated in. So uh, it would be good to have somewhat. Uh, of that level of participation again I would say uh, I did want to just give a quick update uh, we are meet, having a joint public uh, meeting with the planning board April 19th at 6 p.m. Uh, to look at the rezoning of 130 Cottage Street which for those of you that don't know where 130 Cottage Street is it's the corner of Cottage Street as you turn on to Holyoke Street um, that building that's kind of turning the corner there uh, to rezone it from R10 to downtown business, which would allow something to be done in that space. Uh, and we also are we're hoping to have a, a meeting uh, to announce tonight to, so we could um, start discussing the single-use plastic bags and styrofoam containers uh, because next Wednesday, which is our normal meeting time, there is the school uh, event over at Eastworks. Um, we weren't able to meet on that, but we are trying to uh, get a meeting time together, and we will an announce that and have that posted as soon as we can find a date that's agreeable. And that concludes. I have one question for you, Councilor. Sure. Derby. Can you explain to me as a general example what the Supreme Court feels like? For instance, is a sign that says no parking, is that content? I mean, how so, strict is this? <laughs> kind of. Uh, so, you know, if a real estate sign would be a good example. So if you said, um, if you need to read the sign to, to create the definition of that sign. So if you say, oh, that's a real estate sign because it's a uh, real estate, that is no longer uh, okay. So we, we can't well, have sections so we can, that say real estate signs. No, nope. okay. we have to say that certain signs are going to be this dimension and they are attached to either a building this way or they are in the ground this way. Mm -hmm. And we create the sign ordinance based around those types of restrictions, not based on the content of the sign. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Thank you. Fine. Just add add to that. I, I think it behooves every one of us to read the Gilbert, I mean the the uh, Reed case, uh, because it is really complicated. It is Supreme Court, a new, a whole new concept of signs that really takes very strict approach to what can be placed. I mean, if you think about it, across the country, nearly every community has content-based zoning regulations regarding signs. So that's a, just a sweeping change. And I think the Supreme Court meant to use, to, to, that, that they took such a, a narrow perspective, uh, tightening everything up, because they really looked at the case. The case was essentially a, a community that said, you know, you can't put up these signs or more than 12 hours before an event. And you must have them down within an hour or two after the event. This was a community where there was a church involved, and the church didn't have a permanent home. It had a temporary home that moved from one location to another. And the only way they could get the message out as to where the meeting was going to be held uh, was by putting signs in the community. And lots of people, I'm sure, felt that maybe that wasn't the best use. But then the other folks on the other side said, hey, you know, Putting up a sign to let the community members know when the next meeting is at 9 o'clock at night really isn't going to help us for our Sunday morning session. And we're moving. So the court really dealt with some important issues. And I think nowhere across the country have we found that they've taken on changing their ordinances, their sign ordinances, to conform. So we get to have the opportunity, on one hand, to have make a real impact and a model for the whole country, at least for Massachusetts, or on the other hand to say, Geez, maybe we ought to sit back and let somebody else develop it and, and let them spend the legal funds because there will be some legal money spent. So I think Jessica's taking the approach that we could really set, uh, have a model program and it does offer us an opportunity. Right. Uh, and I would add to that that so far in Massachusetts there's two communities that have uh, tackled this. Um, one was before the Supreme Court ruling and one is I think slated to vote on it in May. Um, so you know we are poised to be on the cutting edge of you know changing our ordinance so I think that's that's a good place for us to be or 
<laughs> or not. <laughs> not. <laughs> so, uh, but we're there. The yes, Supreme yes, Court yes, has put yes, us there. Yes. It's interesting. Read through to the last, some of the last uh, uh, opinions that may not conform to the, they're not quite dissenting opinions, but it's interesting. One of the comments was now we, uh, the Supreme Court has made themselves the supreme, uh, the, the supreme decision maker of signs across the country. <laughs> we'll be the board of review for signs because they anticipated getting challenges because there's so many content-based signs. It really is a complicated subject. Yeah, interesting. <coughs> Shall we okay. look forward to it? Yes, exactly. Well, you're on again, Councilor Kwasinski. I believe property is next. And if you want to move your, your new business too, you can do that. Uh, well, for property, we had a, a, a brief meeting to discuss the role of the property committee. And uh, we're going to have to meet again to flesh that out some more. Uh, but, but kind of talked about some additional roles that weren't the typical ones. They certainly talked about purchase, lease, rental management, record keeping, utilization, disposition of, of property, other matters that may be referred. But then there may be a role, the discussion that went into maybe there'd be a role regarding the new abandoned housing uh, initiative that the mayor had been in, in, involved with. And we are going to discuss with her how the property committee may be helpful in that process. Uh, we also talked briefly about our role regarding community property. And what came up was the Parsons Street School. You may recall mm -hmm. that uh, for the members who were here and those who were new, uh, the Parsons Street parcel went from one end all the way. It's a very long parcel. And we cut it in half, the council did and surplus the front section and I think put it to some good use for the neighborhood and for the community. Uh, and the back section still remains to be utilized, mm -hmm. so there may be some discussions as to how we can best move that forward. I know in the previous council our thoughts were that it would make a nice park mm -hmm. and that it would make uh, perhaps a community garden. But I think the public involvement, so I th we may be looking into that uh, some further in bringing that and with the hope of putting this forward and maybe having some plans so when the right grants program came up that we kind of had some plans that could could uh, move this in in a direction where the community had already participated and had a direction and here's our plan and geez we'd love to have this grant uh, apply for and we'd be ready to go uh, that pretty much talks about what happened at property we'll be meeting again and we'll let you know in the date. Would you like to move your... your uh, I have a resolution which is in your packet, and it has to do with the lifting of the charter school cap. This is a resolution against lifting the cap, and I would ask my fellow counselors to consider this, and I hope join me in this. I'll, I'll read the resolution. Uh, whereas the object of free public schools is to provide for quality education for all our students, regardless of income, ability, need, or English language proficiency. And whereas in the fiscal year 2016, the East Hampton School District is losing $729,162 to Commonwealth charter schools and public school districts across the state are losing more than $408 million. And whereas Commonwealth charter schools are not only often approved over the objection of a majority of community residents and their elected officials, but once approved, use public funds without being accountable to any elected official. Whereas further Commonwealth charter schools often fail to serve the same proportion of special needs students, low income students and English language learners as the district from which they receive students and whereas the Commonwealth charter schools often use high suspension rates to drive out students they don't want to serve and whereas the Commonwealth charter school system is creating separate and unequal opportunities for success therefore be it resolved that the East Hampton City Council opposes lifting the cap on Commonwealth charter schools I would like for the uh, council to consider the matter and hopefully uh, endorse this resolution to be sent to our delegation and to uh, State Senate President and to the House Speaker. Do you want to move to rules and regulations for review? If 
you thought that would be the best. The best well, yeah, I, I guess if you're going to send it to committee, which I thought, yeah, yeah. I'd, uh, probably the best place for. So I, I move to send this to rules committee if that's uh, appropriate. I just, I mean, yeah. I'll second. Okay, motion a second to move uh, the resolution against lifting the cap on Commonwealth Charter Schools rules and regulations. Additional questions or comments? All the, uh, Councillor Smith? Um, I just want to encourage all the councillors to come to the forum on our public schools, which will be giving more of a, an education about what the lifting the cap means, how this will affect our schools, and if it's if it's an issue that you are more unfamiliar with, that would be a great place to learn about it. Great, thank you. Additional questions or comments? Did, did we move it? Did we vote? Yeah, I was going to make sure there's no one else want to say anything Sorry. besides that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. <clears throat> okay, and I guess that it's got that. The rules of government relations, Council Rist. Uh, yes, Mr. President, um, I have not had a chance to find out when we could have our next meeting. I am waiting on a couple of committees to submit their mission statements, but there's no rush. So um, I will try to set up a meeting so we can deal with the, uh, the requested resolution, but I'll have to talk to my committee members maybe next week sometime. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, as I had said I would do last meeting, I did uh, meet with uh, Mayor Tosnick and we discussed what uh, his thoughts are as far as the boardwalk and I asked if he would please put that in an email so it, that could be forwarded to the committee to you know, hopefully be their, their guidance as far as which way to proceed with that. Uh, we are still short uh, people for that committee so if there's anyone who's interested please contact either myself or the mayor and uh, we'll keep you posted as that progresses. Um, I believe I that can, well, we've done all the new business, so uh, unless there's any more comment, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. A motion to second adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Motion passes.